Hello and welcome to the Build with Bear workshop. Um, thank you for joining me. Uh, shout out to the chat. I'm going to throw the bear cave in there. That is the emote for subscribers. Uh, so if you're a subscriber and you're there in chat, give me a bear cave. We'll let the people see it. Um, thank you to everybody watching uh, who is uh, new. Uh, to either subscribing or just new to checking it out, new followers. Uh, Mr. Drew Scanlon uh, gave me a retweet today, and that was awesome of him. So a few people are checking out the stream because of that. Uh, a few people using their Twitch coins uh, to support me, which is rad. Um, as always, uh, if you have a Twitch coin because you have Twitch Prime, because you have Amazon Prime, throw that coin my way. Uh, let's me keep streaming, uh, trying to get to 30 uh, hey, Johnny Warps, hello. Uh, trying to get through 30 subscribers. We're at 24 right now. When we hit 30, uh, we'll do another raffle of uh, through all my subs, and a sub will win the Echo Ecto-1 Lego model kit that we built. Uh, the only Lego we've done to date. There'll be another um, uh, kit of that sort in the future, but right now we're focusing more on model kits, uh, plastic model kits, and not uh, Lego. Uh, so yeah, so let's get into it. So basically most of this stream tonight, we will be building the usual. Uh, we're going to work on a brand new model kit. We're going to open up one that was bought from my Amazon wish list, which is rad. We're going to finish up uh, something else that was bought from the wish list, which is this X-Wing. So uh, let's go to the wide shot. Uh, thanks for everybody for joining me tonight. Got about an hour and a half of streaming time tonight. So we've got our X-Wing here. Um, and uh, we're going to build a base for it. Now, the, the base for this is not the base uh, you see in the photo there. It's a different base. It's like an action base, uh, which is I'm actually really excited about. Uh, hey, Donut Rush. I'm doing great. Thank you for joining me. So um, when I first saw this kit, I thought it had uh, two. Um, I'm going to move this over a little bit here. Let's uh, just slide this camera over a little bit. gives a little more room. So I thought that this had two bases. But it turns out it's one base for the uh, uh, kit and then one thing that's just extra. Um, and we'll look at that. Uh, but you may recognize what it is. And so it's just a pretty cool little bonus piece uh, that we'll take a look at. Uh, hello, Mr. Bob. Hello, Zorbs. Uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for everybody uh, in chat uh, watching the stream. Thank you, everybody watching later on YouTube. I know I have a bunch of people that can't watch it live that do catch the replays on YouTube. Uh, so there is something else I could build on this X-Wing. Uh, this X-Wing, uh, there's plans here for landing gear, but since I'm going to put it on the stand, not even going to build the landing gear. Uh, not that Will Smith is hosting the stream, which is awesome. Uh, so nice that Will uh, is streaming that. That's great of him. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, let's, so let's start digging in. We're going to build our base and then we're going to finish up this X-Wing. So let's get, uh, we got our snipper clips, our handy dandy snipper clips ready to go. And we are gonna, up. Oh, it's Kello. Uh, thanks for being here. Uh, Sticky Butt, thank you for the follow. Yeah, uh, if you're new to the stream, if you're checking it out because uh, you just started following me on Twitter because Drew uh, mentioned me, Mr. Drew Scanlon, uh, why not give me a follow? You get updates on when I'm gonna uh, stream. I stream Thursdays and Saturdays uh, right now. Um, next week's schedule is going to be a little different than normal, and I will tweet about that, or I'll talk about that here, and of course tweet it as well. Uh, yeah, Sticky Butt is a great name, Zorbs. You're not wrong. Uh, so we're just going to take off the excess here on this one, on this, what I thought was a base, but it turns out just to be part of the Death Star. That's right. It's part of an iconic scene in the Death Star. So let's see. Uh, so I guess this clear plastic is supposed to be, like, not there, as if it's the air uh, in the sky and not um, and not actually visible. It's supposed to be, you know, invisible piece. So you're, use your imagination, I guess, and just imagine that this is invisible. Put that down there. It doesn't really want to stay. Maybe it will stay later. But, yeah, this piece right now doesn't seem to want to... Uh, stay on this base but uh, we'll put it down and then we'll take a look at it and see um but yeah we've got uh some blasts going on we're recreating an iconic scene in star wars 
So that's pretty cool. And I didn't know this was part of it. I did kind of wonder what these pieces were. They were just like the same kind of coloring you'd often see in uh, in a Gundam kit. Uh, and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't use my imagination properly to imagine what they could be. So yeah, they. Uh, guess there. I have to see how these go. But there's like, oh, okay, I got it now. So they just kind of live in here and they represent the uh, climax of the movie, as it were, the death of the Death Star. And that's just a rad cool bonus. And you can attach that to the base we're about to build for the kit, which is a, a cool little extra thing that I didn't know was in this kit. And I'm pretty psyched about it. Uh, so, yeah, so thanks, for everybody, for joining me um, in my usual Saturday night stream. I appreciate you being here. Uh, new faces, old faces, all of that. We, uh, we jumped a few in subscribers today, which is rad. If you've got the uh, Twitch uh, token or if you just want to use your own hard-earned money and give me a sub, that would be great. Um, that would be rad. You get the Bear Cave emote, which is, uh, which is a hot ticket item. Uh, not really, but you know, uh, this little piece here, um, which I'll just break off, uh, lives on the base when you're not using the base. So I'll put that in the box. Um, but we don't read that right now because we're going to build the, we're going to build the stand, the base stand, and we're going to put our model kit on it. Uh, thank you so much for your subscription. Last Brook. Thank you so much for that. That's rad. Um, I appreciate it very much using your Twitch Prime. Uh, with that, uh, is really cool. Uh, we're on our way once like again. Uh, we've gotten up to like 28 because I've only been doing this for a little while, but uh, some people didn't renew uh, after a month, which is totally fine. I understand. So we dropped down again, but we're fighting our way back up. I'll throw that away. I'll take care of that later. And uh, I'm excited to uh, to continue to do the builds, uh, as it were. All right, so let's see here. Put this on. We did one of these with our last X-Wing, so I kind of know how it goes. I'm just trying to make sure that I notch this properly, and then I notch that properly. And just trying to make sure that I do this the right way, quote-unquote. And... Yeah, that's how it goes. And then that goes like that. Actually, I want it like that, maybe. All right, great. So, we'll just fit this into its slot here. Um, hmm, why doesn't this want to go? You have to give me a second here. I'm trying to figure out why this base doesn't want to necessarily uh, fix. Seems to be the right size. There it goes. Got it. What do we got here? Okay. And uh, so this is adjustable. So right now, if I just put this here on its base, uh, it looks really weird because I didn't adjust it properly, which is kind of fun. That it's like, no, that's, that's definitely wrong. So we're going to pull this back. Let's, let's do this. And then we pull this piece off. And... It's a little harder to move the way we want it to. All right, then we have to make sure that this is lined up kind of even. So then we put on there. Oh, got here. Ute. Ute is now following. Thank you so much for the follow. Appreciate it. Great. So there's our X Wing uh, uh, Star Fighter. And we can attach these two together if we want to attach these two bases together. Um, we can do that. These two uh, stands. You want to do that and that way it's like flying right next to it you can attach them and then I guess if I wanted to do I could do something to simulate the fact that it was a like this is this is fun if you're just like okay that's it that's there um, and then you can separate them which we'll do now oops Cockpit doesn't necessarily like to stay on, which is a little frustrating. 
And so you can separate it and then set up this display like you're about to save the day and everyone's going to be very proud of you and uh, everyone will be very psyched and you're the last Jedi. Uh, and everyone's like thrilled about how a good job you did. So that's it. That's our kit. Uh, the show's over, folks. No, no, I, I, I'm, I'm messing with you. Uh, that's the end of our build. This was uh, purchased by an anonymous uh, user, uh, follower of the show, who sent me uh, this via my Amazon wish list, which I'll put into the chat and also will be on my YouTube archive. Um, so we're just going to store this right now back in our kit, and we're going to start working on our uh, next model kit. I... I uh, could have powered through on Thursday and finished it up, but uh, those of you that were here on Thursday know that I had sudden news that instead of just producing a show, I was performing in a show, uh, which I found out like during the stream. And I was, uh, I got in a pretty bad mood because of that. So I, um, I ended the stream like on time instead of staying a little longer to finish up because I suddenly had more work to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the landing strip pieces off of this and put that aside. Um, uh, down the line, someone's going to win this kit eventually as we grow the channel and I do another giveaway. Uh, and that person could swap them out because they'll have the instructions, obviously. They would be able to swap those out. Uh, yeah, I didn't do any body slam zorbs, but I did uh, did some comedy, and it was very fun. Was some, some comedy wrestling in UCBW, the Comedy Wrestling League that I uh, organize. Um, I'm the day-to-day -day operations officer of that particular show and the uh, one of the head producers of it. So when a wrestler at 9 p.m. decides that they are not going to come to the show, uh, that is that I should stress the show that is at uh, 11 p.m. So when they at uh, yeah at 10 p.m. or sorry 9 p.m. decide they're not coming to an 11 p.m. show, I have to scramble and I have to make it work and I did. I feel pretty good about it. I think the match turned out great. All right, so that's the end of our X-Wing. I'm going to pack this up. Uh, uh, yes, uh, Cross Hunter, with very uh, astute observation, these are uh, Zuron, X-U-R-O-N, uh, snipper clips uh, that I bought on Amazon.com. They were highly rated. Uh, so I purchased those. Uh, good eye, Cross X Hunter, uh, or Cross Hunter, if we're going on the uh, anime thing where you don't mention the X. Um, so yeah, that's the end of our Star Wars kit. We're going to put that aside. I'm going to swap it uh, oh, off screen. And then I'm going to do a swap over here. That's awesome, Cross Hunter. Um, I've talked about these. Uh, so this is the Exia. Uh, this was purchased off my Amazon wish list. We'll talk about it uh, uh, more later. But this is the Exia. This is from Gundam Double Zero, a series I've only watched a very little bit about. I'm excited about it. I like a sword. I like a Gundam with a sword. I like a Gundam with a shield. This is also a real grade. Uh, some God Hands. Uh, ooh, I mean, that's not that's not a terrible idea. Uh so, uh, so this is a real great kit, RG, right over here, real great. So this is new. Uh, I stopped doing building. Right, this is new to me, I should say. Came out 2010, I think. Um, but to me, I had not done uh, any real grade before. I've done high grade. That's when I, when I first uh, started out. I did a lot of that. Um, and I did uh, master grade. Mostly all of the Gundams we built on the show have been master grades. So the, I guess the thing with real grade is it – um, it's got like an inner skeleton to it, uh, which is on the box there. And it's like the simplicity or the size of like a, H, uh, a high grade kit, but it's got some of the tricks you're going to find in your master grade kit. So like another kit that we'll do in the future, probably there's a real great kit for the Gundam wing, uh, the wing Gundam, and that transforms. So I'm not sure exactly what the, uh, the tricks this one are. But yeah, it's somewhere in between high grade and uh, master grade, and I, I've never built one, so I'm excited to uh, get started on it. Um, uh, this this should be a really fun one. Um, yeah, I'm. For those of my regulars here, know that um, I've only done master grades here, so I've never done a real grade. Uh, this is the first time looking at it. I know it's there. Um, 
It's given some instructions that are fun. It's in Japanese, as always. But I guess, yeah, so I guess what's going to happen is that we're going to build, like, yeah, we're gonna, well, we're starting with legs. So that's fun. Uh, oh, yeah, I always debag because uh, the thing with, uh, the thing is that the sound of those bags ripping apart isn't pleasant on the stream, I'm sure. I'm sure there's somebody out there that that's your ASMR is bags opening. Uh, so I apologize that I can't give that to you. But for everybody else, it would have been kind of annoying. So I always do that in advance. And it lets me look at the parts before I get started, kind of take a look at them like, oh, I know this chrome little piece here, C2. Probably not going to do that till the end. Uh, if I could turn off autofocus on the build cam, I might be able to. Uh, I'm just scrolling back here, sorry. Uh, move the pre-built frame around a bit before putting on the armor to loosen it up. Cross Hunter, thank you. That's an excellent piece of advice. Uh, yeah, let's see if I can uh, do something here. Um, uh, uh, do properties. Um, um, video. <laughs> yes. All right. So I did turn off auto focusing here on this main camera. I didn't know that was an issue. So uh, hopefully, uh, yeah, I'm not going to, I'm not, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If I had to restart it for it to work. I'll look at it next time. This is a great note. Thank you for pointing that out. That's something I didn't think about, uh, about it auto-focusing. Uh, so hopefully it will be better off there. But yeah, these are great points. You guys are, uh, so y'all are saying some cool stuff. But, um, yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not here to open bags on camera. So I guess we're starting with the leg units, which is cool. Um, and, uh, yeah, this, so far, looks pretty straightforward. Um, uh, I would say that these steps seem to be, you know, like uh, pretty straightforward here. This already looks a lot like a high-grade kit um, because you're getting like a lot of these pieces are all together, which if this is a master-grade kit, there'd be more work to do for some of these. Um, as you can see here, uh, you'd expect that you'd be doing a lot more of like this piece here. Uh, I'll show that on there. But it's a lot of it looks like it's done to you. Uh, so I don't have a, I don't use a hobby knife, um, but I do use uh, some sandpaper uh, sticks uh, for fine tuning and stuff like that. Uh, Crossletter, those of you that watch a lot know this, but I'll, I'll let Crossletter know. Uh, I don't do any painting. Um, I do some, I'll do some minor sticker application, usually off stream because on stream, I'm just going to be frustrated uh, by that. But I don't do, um, uh, yeah, I don't do any um, uh, painting or marker work. Uh, it's not something that I'm really interested in doing. I might someday. Um, I might do like a bonus stream where I try to do that. But uh, uh, yeah, I just don't have the patience for it. I don't necessarily have the skill to do uh to do paint and or markers, so I usually don't. I'm just kind of focus on the joy of assembling a kit based on what I'm building, uh, and then looking at stuff and trying to figure out what I'm doing wrong after the fact. Um, all right, so that's okay. So one thing I'll point out. Um, so uh, so this little piece here, this would normally be a rubber uh, like a, a letter, like a PC letter. That you would have to snap in but it's already part of the kit so that's already uh this joint here is already done which is kind of interesting um i haven't necessarily seen that before i think that's very cool all right so we're gonna get that piece out we're gonna get b2 out which is our leg the main body of our leg here i'm just gonna try to be careful with all my snips because these seemed these aren't don't necessarily fragile but like i said i've never done this particular kit before or this style of kit before so i'm trying to take my time with it and i will try to do things correct and yeah so there's some extra here just get that off that looks good 
and then it seems to be locking into place with F21 and F22. Okay, so that's going to be there. Um, let me know if you're building anything in chat. Uh, I haven't asked that yet today. Uh, if you're doing any painting, if you're doing any model kits, uh, always let me know. Send me a tweet of a photo of stuff you're working on so that I can uh, retweet it. Because uh, I, I always will. Um, if you're if you're doing something out there, uh, I like to be able to share that information if I have it. Yeah, I haven't invested in like really nice uh, uh, nippers or snipper clips. Uh, I actually really like these because of the kind of lack of res active resistance. Um, it means that I'm not making like cuts or snips that are like so out of control. I feel like I have a lot of control over this. And especially dealing with the pieces I'm doing right now, these these plastic pieces aren't necessarily that thick. So I like that I'm, I'm putting the pressure on it when I want to put the pressure on it instead of, uh, you know, the nice thing about like doing like wire cutters where it's doing a lot of the work for you when you start. Um, and then F22. These are identical between the two. So that's fine. And then... We will snip off a little extra there. Good. Yeah, so this is already, you know, pretty straightforward kits. I have no idea how long these will take me to build. Um, of course, it will take other people uh, more time, I'm sure, or less time, depending on uh, when they're working on stuff. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited to, uh, to get building on this. Oh, yeah. Uh, I love uh, Gundam Planet is just such a nice resource that I wish I had more access to when I was first starting out building kits back in the day. Um, but, yeah, they're, they're a great resource. OK, so that goes on there. Let's do this side. And just trying to make sure that I'm putting things where they belong and doing things right. So I'm taking my time, uh, as always, with with any kit that I'm working on, especially new kits to me. I uh, take my time with the first uh, leg or first arm, and the second one I can move a little faster because I've done it before uh, and I have some experience by the time we get there. And that just locks into place like that. And then, we, you know, so we're good. Already we've got our leg here. We've got some stuff working ahead of time on it, uh, and I believe that goes in there. Great. We already got a lot of our leg working, and we're just going to work that leg a little bit. And, uh, yeah, that's already one leg. And then we'll build the armor around it, which is A. All right. I love that, Mr. Bob. I love that you already have a wish list. Uh, yeah, I don't have anything on Gundam Planet right now. I just kind of look, go and look at stuff. Check out things, occasionally read reviews. Um, it seems to be a pretty cool resource. Uh, A7. Uh, yeah, I'm excited about this kit. This is, uh, like I said, never worked on a real grade. They didn't exist when I was really getting into models. So I'm excited to have uh, the time to kind of figure it out as we go. Um, I also don't know a whole lot about uh, Double uh, Zero. I know that it's an alt-universe show. It's not in line with the normal one, um, uh, the normal main continuity. Uh, it's its own thing. So I don't know too much about it, but uh, this is a good-looking Gundam. Um, and the person that sent this to me had built it and said that if I put this on my wish list, that uh, they would uh, uh, pick it up and send it to me for me to build, which is rad. And so I am doing that. Yeah, Johnny Warps, I know uh, just dealing with international... All, the, all of the international issues you've got. A few of my followers here, uh, a few of y'all I know, are in countries where it's not necessarily easy to get model kits sent to you, um, especially if you're dealing with something like eBay or, or Amazon. It's, it's not always the easiest. Uh, I know that. Um, okay, so let's see here. Go take my time with this one. Don't want to mess this up. As always. All right, so this goes on the top. I know that. Just kind of, that's just the, I get that. That's the 
part of the foot there. And then, so we'll do that. And then let's snap this one in next. Oh, uh, I can see already. I gotta, gotta do a straight clip there. Jump, we jumped uh, in viewers. Thank you all for, for joining. I appreciate it very much. Uh, if you're new to the Build With Bear workshop, uh, I do model kit streams. Uh, uh, we've done one Lego kit. We'll do another, I'm sure, in the future. Right now, we've just done the one. And uh, I'm uh, happy you're here. If you came because Mr. Drew Scanlon, I really appreciate that. Uh, feel free to stick around. If you've got any questions or comments about it, jump in the chat. Um, all right, great. So there's our, uh, there's step one of our feet and then we'll build off that. Um, I haven't done a high grade kit in quite some time. I think last Christmas I bought myself a kit just to kind of work out the kinks cause it had been a long time. Uh, so I forgot how small this was going to be. Um, but that's cool. It'll be easier to, uh, store. Um, uh, the high grade kits, which I used to do all the time when I first started building, uh, those are you know pretty simple, pretty easy to put together. This is a lot more detail, even for that, um, but it's still very cool. So I'm excited about that. And all right, so then we need D. We'll find D here. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, Pathetic player, thank you for following. Appreciate it very much. Thanks for joining us. All right, and then we're going to work on some more armor. Yes, Pathetic, yes, uh, I, I've been doing it for a couple months. Um, I, uh, I've been doing the, yeah, doing these streams for a couple months. Uh, pretty new to it, uh, but thank you for the follow. I, I'm glad that... Uh, you traveled here from via will uh, Johnny warps. I'm glad there's a hobby store in your town. Yeah, go check it out um, When I first started doing I first got into kits because they were available for purchase at my job uh, I worked at an import store that um, sold let's say uh, Some of the stuff we sold uh, it was an Asian import store Some of the stuff we sold was totally legal our wall scrolls were legal our uh, CDs were legal uh, a lot of the stuff we sold was totally legal and cool. And then also we sold fan subs, which of course is totally illegal and like total and morally not cool. Uh, uh, this was in the uh, late nineties. So it was, there was anime on TV, but there wasn't much of an anime DVD distribution in the United States. So a lot of people watch stuff on there. Uh, net Prince, Thank you for following. appreciate that. Uh, Trying to work on your backlog two high grades a week. Yeah, well, that's awesome. Uh, I, uh, I'll i be interested to see how long a uh, a, uh, a real grade kit takes on stream. You know, our, uh, our X-Wing there took no time at all. Um, the, those kits are pretty, pretty much high grade kits. Um, and Master Your Kits usually take a couple episodes of the show. Um, yeah, so I started doing model kits because I worked at a store that sold them, uh, which is crazy to think about uh, and at the time. And I got asked to build one for a display. I believe I'm, I made a, a high-grade Zaku for a display. And I had never done a kit before. I'd done, like, old, old, old kind of, like, glue kits, but never a Bandai kit of uh, Gundam. Even though I did like the show, I just never had done it. And uh, found that I really liked putting them together. And since I was into Gundam Wing and Gundam X and G Gundam, I just started buying kits and putting them together. And then for many, many years, I did not at all. Uh, thank you, uh, Net Prince. Uh, I mean, I love doing. Uh, I, I love joining the uh, Beast Cast when they when they have the opportunity to have me. Um, hopefully I can do that again at some point. Um, they've got way more people now than they did, uh, the last, in the last while. So I'm not too sure if we're going to have, uh, our Christmas episode or not. 
uh, if they'll need to bring back guests or maybe I'll just convince um, Austin that we should do it somewhere else. I'm not too sure because I got two employees they didn't have last Christmas. Uh, I'm not hating on the glue kits. It's That's how long ago when I first started doing it when I was a kid. Those were glue kits and those were fun. But like, oh, man, I mean, the, when we skipped a step on Thursday, I was able to go back and fix it. But I would not be able to do that if I was dealing with uh, with glue kits like, oh, and then also also not dealing with glue. That sounds great to me as well or cement or anything like that. I'm pretty psyched about snapping things into place. Um yeah, I'm not. I'm not here for glue kits. That's not. That's not my style. Uh, I did it in the past and like doing it. But yeah, then I didn't build for a really long time. And uh, as the story goes, I've been wanting to stream for a while. And everyone does game streams. And I love video games, but I'm not necessarily a multiplayer guy. And could never think of a like. What's what's the thing I'm gonna build? Like what's the what's the show for me? Like where where uh, where am I gonna do? And so it just kind of made sense eventually to be like, okay, well, what if I did a uh, model kit building? I love model kits. And, uh, you know, why not want to give it a shot? Creative is a thing here on Twitch. So I figured I would give it a try. And it turns out that uh, some of y'all are interested. So I appreciate that. Uh, hello, uh, Shenanigary. Uh, thank you for your second month subscription. I appreciate it so much. Uh, thanks for letting everybody in the chat know that you're subscribed again. That's awesome. There's plastic guitar picks around as they work well with separators. Cross 600, that's a great tip. Thank you so much. Using using a guitar pick as a, as a separator. Yeah, I've been using a little bit of snipper clips. Uh, I've used uh, nail pliers uh, in the past if I've had to. Um, but that's a great tip. Uh, thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. Uh, all right, let's look for C. Um, okay. And let's see where C is. This is C. All right, no, is this C? Nope. Okay. Here we go. Here's C. Nope, those are E. <laughs> There's only so many. I just, there we go. Here's C. Uh, this, this is the thing where normally for me anyway, uh, and the kits I build, Messer kits, a is usually when it's multicolored. So since this has different colors on it, I just assumed it was the wrong piece. All right, so C16. And that is, there's only so many that would look like that. There it is, great. Yeah, Cross X Hunter, uh, I actually... Um, we made a point, um, he says, in, uh, they say in the chat, that I uh, should consider putting uh, Gunpla in my show description or at least, or maybe putting the model kit in there. And uh, I actually didn't, I chose not to do that at first. I might do that now, but I chose not to at first because uh, when I first started streaming, I hadn't built in a while. And so what I didn't want to do is be considered by any means um, an expert in it. So what I didn't want was people to come into my stream that were like, I'm a, I build all the time uh, and come in and be like, what do you do? What? We were working on a G Gundam master grade. You're not working on perfect grade. Uh, so I was like, all right, I'm going to keep that off now. Now that I've built it up and built a little bit of my confidence, uh, maybe I would uh, jump in there and let people know what's going on and let people find me. So at first I was just focused on people who already know me and like what I do. Uh, jumping in and being able to watch me stream as I kind of got my confidence up. Now I'm at the point where, yeah, I probably should advertise that I'm doing Gunpla for people to uh, be able to come and check it out. Uh, but at first I just, you know, I mean, I watch a lot of streams and I watch people who are very good at what they do. And I watch people who are just figuring it out. And my number one thing that always bums me out is when people are like, Hey, we haven't played these Jackbox games. Let's try it out. And they get people in the comments just going like, how do you not know how to do this? Or I always go back to um, uh, Giant Bomb got very early streaming access to uh, Street Fighter 4, like way before a lot of people. So when they went live with it, they got a lot of like, 
people that don't normally watch what they do that just wanted to watch stuff. So they were being very specific and being very uh, shitty. And I always that always uh, sticks in the back of my head. So I would like to, you know, do this for people that kind of know who I am and know what's going on. And then I've certainly been thinking about trying to branch out to people that are just like looking for people making gun blood that don't necessarily know me. Which is probably a very long-winded answer. Yep, yeah, I'll say this, Johnny Warps. Um, then we'll, so let's knock on wood on this wooden table. I've uh, never had to boot anyone out of the streams. Never had to do, do any moderation at all. Um, which I'm very proud of. Uh, this uh, small little uh, friend group here uh, uh, of nice, nice people. Uh, has been great, very informative, uh, and very cool and chill. So I haven't had to do anything like that. And I'm sure once we build, I'll have to, like, try to get some volunteer moderators or, you know, focus on doing that, that kind of thing. Uh, oh, believe me. Uh, believe me, Crosshunter, we've done uh, – the Shining Gundam was our first build, and uh, – it was, it was, I would say, a little bit of growing pains was dealing with the screws in that kit. And then we also did the uh, Master Gundam. Uh, yes, those are very old and do involve screws. Uh, I believe that the Wing Zero Gundam uh, Master Grade that we built had one screw in it. Um, but believe me, I'm well aware of that. Uh, yeah, because I've done two uh, G Gundam kits. And then in my wish list, I have the... Uh, uh, one more of them. Um, but I know they're old. I just like G Gundam, you know? Um, that's just a series that I'm real into. All right, so we'll do that. So believe me when I tell you, I, uh, I remember it well. And, uh, and I'm, <laughs> I had some real frustration. I made some mistakes on that Shining Gundam, uh, because it was the first kid I had done a long time. And trying to get tiny screws into place was not fun. We eventually figured it all out, and it it's actually a really fun kit. It just was – it started in a – it started kind of in a bad place when I was first getting into it. Uh, yeah, I haven't done any of the uh, high-grade kits for G Gundam uh, in uh, at all. Uh, I wouldn't mind looking at one of those one of these days. Um, but I like the old ones. I mean, I, I like what I like. Um, I haven't done anything from Gundam X. We're, uh, we're going to get there at some point. I will, I will pick up, a maybe the double X kit. I built that back in the day. So I kind of like want to build the thing that I built once. I think that would be really fun. I'd love to go back and build a few kits that I've built years and years ago. Um, you know, uh, that's definitely an option, something I, I've been considering, and uh, I bet those feel weird because it's been a long time since I even thought about Gundam X. I don't. I bet it doesn't hold up. But at the time, I really liked it. All right, got a little bit of a tiny piece here. MG Double X on the list. Uh, built of the year earlier this year. It's really good. Yeah. Um, yeah. My my list has a few things that I would just like think look cool. Uh, and then have a few things that are like nostalgia for me, but I also, uh, all of which I think would be fun to do on the build. You know, I got that perfect grade on there. I'm never expecting any of y'all to ever build that perfect grade, but to buy that perfect grade. But, you know, it's a, it's a fun thing to think about having. All right. So this goes in. Okay. So I'm going to, there's a tiny little piece here. We're going to, we're going to lock this in place here on our, uh, there. That's just slid right in. That's very cool. That slid in like no problem. I like that. This is all coming together really nicely. Uh, I think this looks, this is a pretty cool little uh, piece. We're going to finish off by putting, uh, so there's room for stickers here. We're not going to do them. Uh, I might do them off camera. Uh, not going to do them on stream, but there's, uh, this is where I would put some stickers on this. It looks like, uh, but that is not something I'm going to do on stream. Uh, uh, since we've been talking about the wish list a bunch and we're about halfway through our stream here, I will uh, put up some links. So, and chat, I'm about to put up a few links. They will be in the YouTube description, of course. Here we go. 
So we got my Patreon. We've got uh, my wish list on Amazon and my Ko-Fi, which is for donations. Um, anything I, that goes to any of those, obviously, goes in the building. Patreon, uh, the goal is to hit $150 a month. We're at, uh, I believe, 40-something uh, as of right now. 48, I think. Once we hit under 50, then I will be doing a third stream, which will be uh, Tuesday afternoon. So it'll be Tuesday, uh, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern or or 2.30 p.m. till 4 p.m. Eastern. Haven't quite decided that yet, but we're a ways away. So I think I think I can still do the hour and a half, but I have to look into it. But either way, if I do that, that would be um, that. Uh, Yeah, crossover. Uh, it's, it's something I've definitely been thinking about uh, putting a few stickers on, but not something I, I, I'm comfortable doing on stream. So I'm not going to do it. So yeah, so those are the things. Uh, the Patreon is something that I is new, but it's for a way people to support that uh, that don't want to be a subscriber but still want to support what I do. Um, and uh, five dollar plus, five dollar, ten dollar subscribers. Uh, not subscribers. Sorry. Uh, thank you for the follow, Kittus. Um, Patreon backers of that. Uh, range get uh, the archive of this on my YouTube a day early. Everyone else will get it tomorrow, uh, and they will get it tonight. So that's just a little something nice and easy. And then I have uh, two kits on deck waiting to go, and I'm going to put a poll up very soon on uh, my Patreon for which kit I do next for the uh, $10 a month backers. So people that are backing at the $10 level will get to vote on what I do after uh, this kit. So that's exciting, I think. And 18. And okay. And uh, what was I just put in there? I put the links in the chat. Um, oh, yeah, my schedule for next week. So I'll put this in. This will be on notification. I'll send out a message. You know, I'll be talking about Twitter a bunch as well. Um, but uh, here's my schedule for next week. It is Thursday. I will be 2.30 p.m. till 4 p.m. Eastern. That's an afternoon stream. Uh, and then Saturday, I'll be doing 8.30 p.m. till 10 p.m. Eastern, which is just a half an hour start and a half an hour later, uh, earlier end on Saturday. Um, next Saturday, uh, the reason I'll, I'll explain backwards. Next Saturday uh, at 10 p.m. Eastern is when... Uh, Mr. Aaron Trites will be running the League of Heels show from Australia, and I want to watch that. So I'm just going to do half an hour early, end there, and then immediately start watching that stream, and then I'll host it on this channel for people that want to watch it there. That's at uh, PAX Australia. He'll be there. So it's Sunday afternoon for him, but Saturday night for us. Um and then that Thursday, unfortunately, I have to work Thursday evening. I normally have that night off, but uh, unfortunately, I uh, have to cover because I'm a boss, and sometimes you got to work, and you got to work when you don't want to. But I still want to do two streams next week, so I'm going to do it in the afternoon before I go into work on Thursday. So it'll be 2:30 p.m. until 4 p.m. Uh, on that uh, Thursday, and then I go into work. At, I go. I leave my apartment at 4:30. So those are. That's what's happening there. I apologize. Uh, for next week. Yeah, PAX Australia is next weekend. Uh, it snuck up on it, uh, which means that that's, you know, the end of October. And then November is like right around the corner. So that's crazy. But yeah, um, Aaron will be in Australia, my comedy uh, show, video game wrestling partner. And I unfortunately could not go to that. So instead, I want to watch the show. So next Saturday, I'm just going to and the stream. I'll start the stream half an hour early because I didn't want to do an hour just so I could watch a stream myself. I wanted to give you the full stream. So instead, I'm just uh, going to start a half an hour early and then an half an hour early. Oh, also, yeah, well, Johnny Warps, the thing I need to say is there are always PAXs. There are. This year, there's going to be the fifth PAX in November. There's there's a PAX at the end of Australia, at the end of October in Australia, and then the middle to end of November in Philly. Unplugged is the fourth U.S. PAX, which is unsustainable. And uh, I have a few friends that were all like really gung ho about going to Unplugged that have slowly been backing out of the show as they realize they don't necessarily have 
the money for it. Uh, for me, it's not too big a deal. I'm going to go um, and uh, I'll be able to do a stream that Thursday and that Saturday. I'll do an afternoon stream from from my uh, Airbnb. My Airbnb supposedly has really great internet. And so I'm going to bring my gear since I can take the train down uh, to Philadelphia from New York. So since I'm taking the train, I can bring all of my streaming gear with me. And uh, I'll just go down there like that and uh, set up at uh, in the my Airbnb. And I'll do a stream that, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, that, that Saturday. That's the plan anyway. Of course, that could change. Um, as with everything, that could totally become different. Uh, but that's the plan right now. Yeah. Uh, I, I agree, Johnny. Uh, I think this board game focused one is a, kind of a strange one. I, I'm mostly going because it's in Philadelphia and easy for me to get to. And I like going to the first packs. Like I went to the first pack south in Texas. And that was rad. That was really cool to be like at the very first one as they kind of figured out what it was. Uh, that piece I did not need to pull out. I pulled out. I just snapped off a piece that I did not need, which is a rookie mistake. I'll put that aside in its box so that I don't do that again. Um, yeah, I'm like, uh, that's mostly why I'm going. I do like board games and I'm excited to go and, and play some games and demo some games and all that. But mostly it's because it's a thing that other people like it's a new one and I like new ones and it's a chance to do some shows. Uh, I'll have a panel down there. I'll do four four in it. I've got a great cast. Uh, yes. V long. Hello. Welcome. Yes. This is my jam. Uh, yeah. I mean, Hey, if we're going to talk about marketing and things that are under marketed, hello, uh, let's take a quick moment. I'm going to go over here. Hello. If you are in the New York area or the greater New York area, or you have a couch you can sleep on, I highly recommend coming to uh, GamerX East November 4th and 5th. I'm going to double check the dates on that uh, right now. Yes, the 4th and 5th of November, that's very soon, is GamerX East here in New York. It's an awesome, very small convention, smaller than GamerX in San Francisco. The East one is small and cool. I'm doing a 404 it panel that I'm going to film, and then it'll go on my YouTube. My guests are Danielle Riendo and uh, 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 Alexandra Von Cheston and uh, Abby Russell from Giant Bomb. All great, wonderful people, the one of which has been on my panel before, the other two not. It's going to be great. So... Um, that's GamerX East, uh, and that's coming up in two weeks, and I'll have to do a different Saturday. I might not stream it all that Saturday. I might just do, like, Friday night instead. I have to figure that out. But uh, I'll have a show Saturday night, and then I will film it and then put it up the next week for everybody to watch. Uh, so I want to get it out there because uh, right now I don't know exactly if my panel's going to be on Saturday. I requested it. They haven't put the schedule up yet, so it's possible – that I won't be at that time, but I have made the request for that time, and hopefully they're going to honor my request. So this piece doesn't seem to... I'm going to admit this piece doesn't seem to want to go in where I want it to go, uh, but we'll look at that later and figure out why. I might be putting it on wrong. Am I putting it on wrong? I am. I'm putting it on wrong. Got it. Okay. I was put that on wrong. Uh, so... Uh, yeah, so GamerX East is rad as hell, and I love it. I want to support it. So I assume that I will have a Saturday night panel. It's totally possible I won't. It's possible I might have a Sunday afternoon panel, but last year they gave me that great, great time slot, and I requested it again. I was like Sunday, I was like Saturday at 9 p.m. or 8 p.m. or something like that, and it was a great slot, and uh, people came out to it. So I'm hoping that they will give me that slot again that I can do that slot again. All right, we're going to put some blank pieces on here. Um, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to, to promote smaller uh, conventions um, uh, if you don't already know about it, uh, which is why the kind of smaller New York ones, the ones I go to, I always try to uh, really promote as best I can. Um, 
like GamerX East, like FlameCon. Like, uh, I kind of go on and on about FlameCon because I love it so much. Um, all right, so i got to figure out where this goes like that. Okay. Just trying to line these up right here because obviously a piece snaps in on the side. So those look cool. Okay, we'll put that. Yeah, we'll grab that. I'm going to cough. Pardon me. <coughs> hmm. I apologize for that. I uh, I didn't blow my voice out, but I did a lot of yelling last night. I went to uh, XSW, which is Extreme Serious Wrestling. Uh, it is a comedy wrestling show. This just started up. They're doing monthly shows. Uh, they're on Powerbomb TV, um, and they tape in Brooklyn. It's a lot of my friends are in it. I'm not involved with it, but I have a lot of friends who are involved with it. So I went to go support them and check out their show. Uh, and, uh, and I did a lot of yelling. It was a really fun, silly, uh, fake wrestling show. And when I say fake wrestling, I mean like comedians doing it, not like, um, uh, not like, uh, like it's not like Chikara, which is a funny wrestling show, which is a wrestlers who are funny. This is straight up like really just comedians pretending to be wrestlers. It's a very funny show. Uh, extreme serious wrestling. Uh, oh, God, here. Just saw someone submitted your Patreon on the Jubilee server. Oh, Isk, that, that's awesome to hear. Um, yeah, Drew gave me a retweet today, which is really nice, and I got a few people uh, support me on my Patreon. Um, and uh, that's very nice uh, that people are checking it out. And it's a thing, it's like, it, obviously it's not for everyone, uh, but a few people are like, I can give Pat a dollar a month to keep doing build streams, um, which is awesome because uh, the main thing is that this is obviously my free time that I'm doing this in, and sometimes I turn down little bits of work here and there in order to do it, which is my choice. And so I'm not like saying like, oh, boo-hoo me. But it does mean that I am uh, uh, putting some money into this. So if I can get some support of some backers, that would be great and uh, greatly appreciated. All right. Still working on this leg. There's a lot of detail to this, which I'm really into. Um, so we got some D1, D1 there. Uh, I'm just trying to find all the pieces I need uh, on this, get these out, and get this leg built. Be long. That's awesome. I'm glad you're here. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I backed Drew. Uh, as soon as he mentioned cloth map, I was, uh, I was happy to support him. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm at the $3 level. I, it's a, a good level to, uh, of backing. I'm happy to have some videos early. I don't need... I don't need much. Um, I'm mostly just happy that Drew is doing something really rad. And he's off around the world uh, chasing his bliss and uh, making cool video content. Uh, if, you're not, if you're not checking out Drew Scanlon and Cloth Map, you totally should. Although I imagine that everyone who is here at least knows about it, if not already backs it. All right, so that goes on like this. These go on here. I'm going to try to line this up right. Uh, uh, okay. These are actually uh, right now a little small, but should be a little kind of a tiny piece, but should be fine. They don't have, have a full, there's a little part. It's not a full circle, so you can kind of see where it needs to line up and snap into place. Uh, like that. Yeah. Oh, Dwarps, that's awesome. Yeah, I um, I put all on YouTube because, you know, I only do two streams a week, and it's nice to constantly be, be able to put up stuff on YouTube and have people check it out. Um, my YouTube is obviously youtube.com slash patbear. I'm on twitter.com slash patbear. I'm all over the internet as patbear. Um, and I am seriously considering, but I have not made my decision if I am going to start Actually uh, taking photos like before every stream or after every stream uh, for my Instagram because I kind of hate Instagram. And also I have It's Pat Bear on Instagram, not Pat Bear because I was late to the party. Um, so I haven't really made that decision. If I'm like right now, I'm still not thinking about it. 
Okay, so I gotta get this on here. I'm not really sure how this goes on. Kind of don't want to fuck this up. There we go. Got it. Okay. Nope. You'll have to forgive me. It's taking a moment here to. Um, oh, I uh, we haven't done anime talk today. I haven't actually been watching anything. I've been doing uh, my rewatch of uh, Interview with Monster Girls and my rewatch of uh, that show has been great because uh, I wanted some monsters for Halloween, but I didn't want a horror show. So I'm watching Interviews with Monster Girls again, and it's been awesome. I really recommend that show. It's just cute and fun and funny, very supportive uh, ladies show. And uh, I'm going to do a rewatch of all of, let's see if I can do all of, uh, new game and then new game uh, two exclamation points the sequel. I would love to watch the, all of the regular first season of new game again because that's just a really fun, funny, positive show, and I'm kind of in the mood for that. So I'm not really sure what I'm doing wrong here, but uh, I'm having a little trouble getting this piece on. Uh, trying to do everything right here, it just doesn't seem to want to snap on right. So I'm having a little bit of a, there we go. Got it. Okay. Not really sure why that was hard, but it was. And, uh, okay. I got it. Great. Got that piece on. Okay. A little tricky there, but I got it. Um, I'm going to drink a sip of water here. Give me a second. All right. Sorry about that. Like I said, I was yelling yesterday, and uh, so now I'm going to just kind of work out the kinks on this. Great. So we got most of our leg done here. Um, oh, no. We got all our leg done here. Uh, all of our leg is done, so now we're going to work on the other leg. Now, as, as I said, this should go a little faster because I already did it once. Yeah, uh, V-Long, that's my favorite thing is when you're like, uh, especially kits that I've never worked on before, like this kit, I'm like, I don't understand why this doesn't work. And then you're like, oh, and suddenly it does work. It's such a great feeling. Um, after working on so many Master Grade kits, it's so weird to work on a kit that like like this that has like so much of it done, like so much of the leg is already done. It should be like eight sections that like slot together. Instead, it's just... Uh, like two major sections that, that kind of come together. It's very strange. The fact there isn't like a thing of joints to connect them is so weird to me. I'll get used to it, but it's, it's very odd. All right, great. So that goes there. And then the other one is, uh, but yeah, like the arms, like this, this is going ahead. There's like a whole section here for the, uh, the, the arms that is like, most of the arm is like skeleton is already done. And that's so weird to think about uh, how much of that is already pre-made considering we've been doing master raids. Um, what we got here? Uh, Dungeon World Translation Project. Watch it. Um, Yeah, I um, I I haven't been watching a lot of the new anime. I mean, I'm I caught up on Food Wars. I'm caught up on Food Wars. I like Food Wars a lot. Then there's Urara, Ura, Urara. I can't pronounce it, but that is a new anime that is based on like a web comic, or like a web motion comic that ran on Crunchyroll that I never watched. Um, and the uh, that anime is supposed to be really weird. Uh, and that's all I've been kind of hearing about i haven't heard about anything like really exciting like you know like i'm not watching uh boruto because i just like i need a break man i'll i will i'll watch it but like everybody like everybody's kids isn't it like i think the main villain right now is like the kid of a character that like you're like really that person had sex okay uh no spoilers but i was like nah i don't know I feel like that person didn't have a son that he trained to be a, a ninja. That seems like a stretch. So I've been watching Boruto, 
Um, but I, you know, I will. I just need a break because I watched a lot as it was coming back, as Naruto was finishing up. Ancient Magnus Bride. You know what? I, I've heard very good things about March Comes In Like a Lion. Um, I think I want to check that out. Uh, I watched the uh, info. Of, I watched, like, the trailer and read a bunch about um, uh, the uh, Ancient Magus Bride, Magus Bride, and it didn't really interest me. But, I could, you know, I might want to give it a shot. Uh, like I said, it, it just didn't it didn't pique my interest when I looked at it. And then uh, Black Clover or something Clover, uh, I'm giving up on because I, I watched the first two episodes and it didn't catch me. But I want to watch some stuff because I'm paying for Crunchyroll, for God's sake. So I'd like to feel good about my choice and watch something that interests me. Uh, you never know with that, though. Sometimes you, just, sometimes you just hit a season that just isn't hitting you, right? Um, I've definitely been there before. All right, so this goes on here. This shouldn't be too hard now that I've done this once for. And then that goes like that. And then that goes like that. Okay. Uh, I'm doing Crunchyroll. I've been a Crunchyroll subscriber for a number of years. Uh, I have my free account on VRV, but I, I'm a paid Crunchyroll person, so I get stuff when it comes out. And I don't have to, like, uh, wait. Um, but, yeah, I have a paid Crunchyroll subscription, um, which I like a lot. Uh, okay, so let's see. I think I put this on. Did I put? Yes, I put uh, this on wrong. Hooray! So I put this on wrong because I was thinking about anime. But this should be easy to get off because it's just the two separation pieces. Um, and... If I had, they're great, okay, easy enough to take this off. Uh, that's what I get for thinking that I'm going to barrel right through it because I've done it before. Uh, but luckily that was an easy fix. And, and, yeah, easy fix, got it done. Feeling better about that. Okay. We did it. All right. We did it, everybody. Everybody feel free to be. Nobody freak out. We got it. Um, great. Okay. So moving along. Uh, your kit from earlier today had a G1 sheet every time you got strict thinking about wrestling. Yep. Uh, so, uh, so, Mr. Bob, VRV is like a company that um, – I don't know. They have some partners with Crunchyroll. They're like, I think the idea was they were going to be like a media company for people to watch stuff on virtual reality, but now they're just like a media company. They bought a bunch of series from CISO when CISO like sh kind of shut down. So they bought up a bunch of original series and they're just like getting content. I know that when Crunchyroll is down, you can use your login from Crunchyroll on VRV and watch stuff. So like occasionally on Saturdays, Crunchyroll would like go down because they were just hitting too many people into their shit. Uh, and so I know that that was a thing you could do. Um, but I don't know much about their business model beyond being like into a bunch of media properties. Yes, yeah, so you get anime and you get McElroy Brothers. And um, if you're on VRV, uh, you should watch uh, Hidden America with Jonah Red. Uh, Hidden America is a rad show. Um, it's like it is a parody of Anthony Bourdain's kind of style, like travel to a place and like do a show about that place kind of show. It's really funny and uh, it's got really good talent behind it. And I, Joan is an awesome, dude. And so that show is great. Uh, and I believe Bajillion Dollar Properties is also on uh, was a CISO show that is also on uh, VRV, if I'm not mistaken. And that show is really good. Uh, so there's a few shows on there that were on CISO that are now uh, part of a VRV, Verve. Or I guess it's, it's actually Verve. I've been told it's actually Verve, and I was always calling it VRV, and I've been told that I'd say it wrong, that it's uh, Verve, but I don't know for sure. Uh, so don't quote me on it. Yes, uh, Alexa Ray was there. Um, I know Alexa Ray was there because she was like, 
part of Crunchyroll, but not really part of Crunchyroll. And I, I, I think it might be something of like the idea of like, well, everyone's getting into anime, so maybe we should not just be the anime people. I think that was the idea. Was let's not just be the anime folks. Uh, Daylight Gaming, thank you for the follow. Really appreciate it. Thanks for jumping in and joining us. Um, so I think that I think that was the idea. Is that like it's like the parent company of Crunchyroll wanting to have like something besides just anime, since uh, since there's Funimation and and there's Anime Strike and Hulu and I think Netflix is like. I mean, Netflix has their, their, um, uh, what series does Netflix have? Netflix has, oh, Netflix has, uh, the, uh, Godzilla series that I haven't watched yet that I've heard uh, pretty good things about. Um, so like everyone's doing anime right now. So I think, I think VRV or Verve is like an idea of like, what if, what if we had more than just anime? Uh, don't quote me on that, but that's my feeling on there. Yes. Yeah, so and Netflix has, uh, the Voltron series. So Netflix is, uh, doing, I think I think they said that next year they're doing like a bunch of original movies and a lot of original series and some of which are in with uh, V Long. Thank you for the follow. Uh, no, and yeah, and um, uh, Mr. Bob, you're right. Uh, Alexa is not with that company anymore. I think that was like a short term gig uh, with Verve. Uh, all right, so we got our feet. We're gonna move on. Just drop this to my lap. Uh, so we got one leg done. I'm going to put that aside. We're working on our other leg. This is our uh, first, uh, for the reminder, this is the first time doing this real great kit. Uh, yeah, I've heard that. Uh, I didn't watch all of the Netflix series, but it did feel like they had a grand vision for Castlevania. And then they were like, um, well, we can make this part look good. Uh, that's what it seemed like anyway, you know. Uh, that they just they hit a, they hit a point where they just budget got got the best of them. All right, a six is this one. Sorry if I'm a little bit of a sweaty mess here tonight. I uh, my fan was giving me some problems. I usually have it on a low setting and it's just far enough away it gives me just enough air to kind of feel like a human. But uh, it was being weird and I had to use it at a middle setting and it was way too loud. I did a test record with it going in the background. And it was uh, just, like, not deafening, but, like, incredibly noticeably and very distracting. So I uh, I don't have my fan going right now. So I'm a little sweaty. I'm a little bit of a sweaty boy. Uh, all right. So that's D2 then. All right. Uh, yep. That's D2 instead of D1. D2 has most of the same pieces that D1 had. Um, it's just for the other leg, which is makes sense, right? Konami killed it, uh, word said. Konami I, I don't know. You think that Konami would want to make money off of their properties if they are not in the let's make video games business, that the let's make animated properties business would be a no brainer, but I'm not a big wig at a company. So I don't know for sure how any of that works. I only know from the consumer side where, uh, where I was psyched about the idea of stuff that I like being in other media. Uh, I think that if done well is very cool. And, uh, I would love it if um, people started moving away from the whole uh, F here. If people started moving away from the whole like movie thing, if uh, if people decided that they're going to abandon the concept of turning their video game property into movies and maybe focused on TV or short series, that kind of thing, I think that would be awesome because I think you can do a lot with a Netflix or uh, even a network television show. Uh, you can do a lot more than you can do uh, with a movie. Because uh, I think that the fact that they don't do well, uh, I mean, some of them have, obviously Resident Evil is a fucking franchise. That did very well uh, for them. Uh, so it's not like that they never do well. But uh, you'd think that they would 
eventually stop making movies based on uh, on uh, video game franchises. I don't know. I mean, EA, you're you're not wrong. Uh, EA seems to want to have their cake and eat it too, and then also make their cake bad, taste bad, and make you not want their cake, and then charge you too much for their cake over and over again. And please get the season pass for our cake. Oh, now we've got cake loot boxes for you. Uh, they're, they're all over the place in a way that is um, seems to just be bad all the time. All right, so i got to put these pieces on here. I don't remember how they went on the first time. They don't seem to want to go on necessarily exactly the same this time. So I'm just uh, kind of figuring this out as I go. Oh, I remember this now. Okay, never mind. I got this. And then these snap into here. And then that eventually is the piece. The piece that gave me trouble last goes on to this, which is why I was having trouble getting that on. Okay, we did it. And then just kind of give this a nice little rundown. All right, great. And now we're going to put some more anchor pieces on. This is all pretty straightforward. This is all stuff we just, just did. So I'm not uh, stressing this too much. And this piece here. Great. Um, 16. Cake loot boxes. Yeah. Uh, I feel like that's the future of um, like uh, cupcake ATMs is like cupcake loot boxes. Like you're not sure what kind of cupcake you're going to get. That's a, that, oh, that's. That's a thousand dollar idea. It's not a million dollar idea. It like will fail and you'll like lose investor money. But I honestly think that you could you could get you could get a few rounds rounds of funding for cupcake loot boxes. Oh, you could get one of these cupcakes. Like it's the perfect size for that. Fuck, that's a it's not a great idea and it's not a good idea, but it's like an idea. You know what I mean? It's like an idea that someone with capital could, like, turn into something. Fuck. I'm mad at myself for thinking up, up cupcake loot boxes. Yeah, I mean, Mr. Bob brings up a good point. If they're, if in the short term and then long term, their shareholders are happy, that's what EA cares about. Now, it's not proven that the, that any of the decisions they make actually help them in the long term, but they certainly help them in the short term, and that's what investors want. So you have to kind of go there. And then the pro the main thing is that gamers talk a big game, but like like Prey didn't sell super well. But if you want awesome single player experiences, Prey should have sold well. And it didn't. And part of it's because they shouldn't have fucking called it Prey, because it's not Prey 2. It's there's nothing to do with Prey. It's a different game. It's a very cool game. But like, so part of that's just like a complete fuck up that has nothing to do with with uh, the gaming boat buying public, right? But like, if you want cool single player games, you have to buy cool single player games. You can't like not purchase those. Um, I don't want to go on a rant with y'all. I'm not mad at you. I'm not yelling at you. Uh, but it is a little, it is sometimes frustrating. Uh, yes, and a bunch of people have spinned off of EA to make their own thing and go their own way. Uh, you're not wrong. Uh, quite comfortable like a dumbass sometimes. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm just starting to feel like I can have a conversation and build, um, but it's, uh, it's sometimes very slow going. I occasionally just, like, realize I haven't been talking for a few seconds with y'all because I've been, like, putting together something. Um, uh, but I am – I think I'm getting pretty good at being able to keep a conversation going and keep it up with chat. Uh Yeah, I think, you know what? I think Loot Crate is actually the reason why all of this, like, the idea of physical crates, like, so, um, 
Pro, uh, oh, uh, David Bonnet, uh, or David Dubonnet. David, I'm saying last part of your name wrong, and I apologize. Thank you for following. Uh, um, so, uh, I follow uh, Mr. ProZD, uh, Sung Wong, on, um, uh, on YouTube, and uh, he's got hit really hard with the, um, you know, makes lots of short, quick videos, and of course, kind of blew up on Vine, and has done well for himself, and makes funny videos that I like. Well, uh, the uh, YouTube uh, monetization stuff has hit him pretty hard, or demonetization, I should say, has hit him pretty hard. So he's been doing like a lot of like loot box like reveals and loot crate stuff, and holy shit, I had no idea how many loot crates there were, how many different type loot crate style things of like bento boxes and ramen crates and. The, the amount of crates is astonishing. I had no idea how many crates there were uh, until I started watching all of his crate videos, uh, his unboxing videos. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, greetings. Hello, Wookins. Don't worry about it. You're here for another 15 minutes. No need to apologize. Thank you for the bit. Yeah, if you want to cheer some bits at me, that's awesome. Uh, no, uh, uh, if you're watching ads and you're, Collecting those cheers, you know, you can send them my way. That sounds cool. Um, uh, let's see here. So this kind of, uh, this is a weird thing where these pieces don't seem to want to go in quite right. And I'm, uh, I'm having a little trouble with it. I don't know why. I'm going to look at the other one. Uh, okay, that worked. Yeah, that was just a little, uh, it was a little tight getting that piece on. But that, that seems to have worked out okay now. So I'm not too worried about it. Um, and, uh, yeah. Great. So we're going to keep moving here. We're putting our symbols. we got another uh, few minutes left on the stream. Uh, let's do some more building. We're going to put some, uh, what do we got here? Uh, e. I need E3. All right. These are our like, little rings, ringlet things here. Putting those on. Uh, what? Johnny Warps, I'm going to scroll up a little bit. Because all I have is last time I spoke to him, he was arguing that unemployed people should be able to vote and brought in some dice guys to yell at me online. So Johnny Warps, I need to know context. Uh, my personal enemy at EA was working law for them. Okay. All right, that sounds like a personal enemy. Uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, okay, so Cinerex. Cinerex, I, I, I'm sorry, I say your name weird. Um, uh, I don't know anything about HQ. That sounds, here's the thing. I watch a lot of comedy because it's my day job. I, uh, I tech uh, sketch and improv. And uh, stand up and tech a lot of stand up comedy. And the thing is, predominantly, and of course I speak, uh, I know that I'm uh, saying this and take it with a grain of salt. I see very good fucking comedy. I see really good improv. I see really good stand up. I see incredible sketch. So the idea of like a weird trivia show hosted by like a bummed out, doesn't want to be there comedian is something that like I just don't want to watch it. So, like, I don't have that app. I haven't seen any of it. I've only heard stuff that Jeff talking about it on the podcast, uh, the Giant Bombcast. So, I don't know anything about that shit. But it sounds terrible. And I don't want to watch it. Uh, so, I don't know. Um, um, that's so weird, Johnny. That you have, like, weird dice people yelling at you on the internet. Like, I don't, I don't know. The internet sucks. I mean, it's great. I'm talking to all you, and you're all cool. But, like, the internet at large, I mean, that's the whole reason that my show 404ing it, my, the best of the internet, exists is because the internet sucks. So it's nice to have, like, a place where it's like, here's some good stuff from the internet. Here's people trying. Um, my show uh, at, uh, at uh, PAX West uh, uh, got kind of featured, blew up a little bit. Be, uh, in a good way, because uh, for one of the first times ever, a creator uh, of content that I showed on my site found out about it, or on my show, 
and kind of tweeted about it. And like, I got a lot of views from people uh, from the Marbles uh, guy for those that watch the show. So that was really cool and, and kind of neat was to have uh, to have people like the creator of something that I featured actually know that I did it. And apparently Jelly watched the show and liked it. And that's rad as hell. Um, uh, it's kind of surprising. Like I said, I, I didn't ex that that uh, I think it's only happened maybe once before. Um, uh, yeah. Um, so the, the yeah that that is the thing, Johnny Warps. You have to say like you have your personal issues with that company, but they they make games that you might be interested in, or the people there you want to support because they they they're such a big company. Um, all that stuff just comes down to your preference, you know, like it's, it's a compromise you make with yourself, right? Um, that you, you should, but I'll say this, uh, for everyone, for all 21 of you watching right now, um, especially those that are on the chat, uh, it is always my, uh, my advice to examine that kind of stuff, to re-examine those things, um, to say, all right. Am I still compromising on this? Am I okay with compromising on this? And make those decisions. And no one should be making those decisions for you. You should be informed. But at the end of the day, like, I have a lot of problems with Scientology. But um, I am listening to Beck's new album. And I like it. And Beck is a Scientologist. And so that is and my problems with it and their feelings on mental health and uh, and therapy and and uh, lots of things about Scientology that I have huge issues with, but uh, I've compromised my my beliefs on that because I really want to listen to Beck's music because I think he's great and uh, he's one of my favorite musicians. So it's a thing that like is really weird and a thing we have to we should constantly be examining. Um, we are uh, about what is it now? Three years? Three years since two year two or three years? Uh, I can't remember exactly since Ender's Game came out and I really rallied against people to not go see Ender's Game um, because mainly because Orson Scott Card used his money and influence uh, to make it so that to try to make it so that people couldn't uh, gay marriage didn't happen in uh, California. Um, he used money that he made uh, over the years as being a writer to work with an organization that their their goal was that you know that marriage equality didn't exist in California and I have friends who live in California who are gay and were looking to get married and so it was a very personal thing for me and this is a person that I loved Ender's Game growing up that was one of my favorite books might have been my favorite book for a time but that was a thing where nope can't do it anymore and for other people not their problem. People were like, I'm going to play Shadow Complex. Uh, I have decided that my feelings on Orson Scott Card do not extend to properties that people have licensed from him. And uh, I respect that and understand it. I don't share that opinion, but I do understand where people are coming from when it comes to that stuff. Like I said, it's all it's all a personal choice that you have to be decide to be okay with certain things. So that, that often are messy. Um And you can't avoid all bad people, Johnny Orbs. That's totally sure. Uh, uh, yes, I, I will never give uh, I will never give Orson Scott Card money anymore. Like I said, it's very personal for me. Um, and that's the thing that I, I always say is uh, I don't always say I like to say is um, once you have that information, you need to be decide how you're going to act on it. Um, we don't always have that information. We don't always know. Uh, that stuff, we don't know people super well. But once we do know those things, then it's like, okay, now that I know this, uh, how do I feel about it? What do I do about it, right? So um, am I going to buy this uh, in three, four years when this new weird revamped version of a Star Wars game comes out? Am I going to buy it? I might. I might buy it because I want Star Wars games to exist. And it won't, is it going to be what this other game was going to be? No, it won't be that game. Uh, but did a bunch of people work very hard on it? I hope so. So it's a thing of like, I haven't made my de decision yet because that game may also never come out. It could become a third game before it finally reaches shores. 
or reaches stores, I should say, not shores. I'm getting a little tired, and so I'm slurring my speech a bit. Um, but yeah, I think it's like, at the end of the day, um, you just have to decide what you want to, you know, what you're comfortable with, what you're willing to to do, and what you're willing to purchase, and what's an, what's a uh, what's all in for you, and what's like uh, 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 no thanks, you know. Uh, yes, I, I do know that, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the Gundam Unicorn guy, um, in the same way that, uh, I have not done the proper research on, uh, I, I, I'm not ahead with the Attack on Titan manga, but apparently that dude has some shitty beliefs and some stuff that I don't agree with, and so it has to be the thing where at a certain point, maybe I'll decide... I'm done with Attack on Titan. But I'll also say that I might also just be done with Attack on Titan because that last season I didn't think was that great and I didn't think that the choice to have more, uh, spoiler, more people transform into fucking Titans was a thing that I really wanted to watch. So I might be done with that show anyway, politics aside. Uh, I might just be fucking done with that show. Um, uh... Yeah, typical politics is kind of it, it kind of feels like a buzzword. Um, it's like a nice way of saying, uh, fuck this person, but maybe they're not hurting anyone, but uh, maybe fuck them. Um, that might be just a nice way of saying that. Uh, all right, so yeah, I'm probably going to fix this off stream. Um, all right, so we're just about done with the leg, but we're going to call it here because I did put this on. I did do something wrong here, and my leg uh, is bending the wrong way here. Um, so I put this on reversed. Uh, I can see that now. This bends like this. This doesn't. Uh, there's, a, th this is, there's a piece on here wrong. So I'll be taking this apart off stream and fixing it, but for now... Uh, uh, for now, I'm going to wrap up. We got one leg totally done, one leg almost done, but, but needs a, a quick uh, fix. Just pulling apart a couple pieces up top and fixing it, which I'm going to do off stream and not on the stream because I don't want to do that on the stream. Right now, I'm going to wrap up. So, like I said, uh, we'll be back next Thursday at uh, 2.30 p.m. Eastern. I'll put out the messages. I'm going to start early on that stream. I apologize for starting early, um, but I uh, I have to work that evening. So once again, I'll put in the chat what I'm streaming next week. Uh, afternoon stream, 2.30 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern uh, next Thursday. Next Saturday, 8.30 p.m. to 10 p.m. so that I can watch uh, at 10 p.m. Uh, Eastern time next Saturday is the League of Heels great Australian bash. So I'm going to watch that. And then, uh, Oh, last Brook, I'm going to interrupt what I was saying, my closing and say, thank you so much. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I like that. Some people, you said that it's, it's, uh, avoiding falling back into this hobby. So some people it's, it's helped them get back into the hobby and other people, it's been a replacement for the hobby, which is rad. Uh, and I'm happy to do either of those things. Here's the links again to my Patreon, to my Amazon wish list, to my Ko-Fi. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, joining me. Thank you uh, to all the subscribers. Uh, thank you for all new followers. Uh, archive will be up. If you're not a Patreon backer, archive of this will be up tomorrow uh, at about noon, 1 PM Eastern time. And then, uh, hey, if for some strange reason my uh, Patreon hits $150 by next Tuesday, I'll do a stream next Tuesday, and I'll make sure to tweet it all out. Thank you all for joining us. Woo kids, thanks for joining us uh, even late. Uh, thanks so much for being here in the Build-A-Bear workshop, and uh, have a great rest of your Saturday. Bye-bye.